In this video, we're going to talk about linearizations. Now, the basic idea of a linearization is that it is basically just a computation of a tangent line. It's not really anything grander than that. What's different about the problem of linearizations than computing a tangent line is that when you first start the calculus course, you're set up with compute the tangent line for a given function at a given point. With linearizations, there's a little bit more judgment involved in how to solve the problem. So if someone says, I want you to use a linearization to estimate the square root of 2, or to estimate the sine of 0 0.1, or to estimate e to the 0 0.1, you have to choose the correct function f of x and the correct point x0 that you want to compute the tangent line about to find the linearization l of x that's appropriate to solve the given problem. Now, the way this picture basically works, you have an underlying function, f of x. There's some point, x0, f of x0, that's easy to calculate in the context of the problem. So for example, for the square root of two, a number nearby that's easy to calculate is the square root of one. A number nearby that's easy to calculate is the sine of zero. A number nearby that's easy to calculate is e to the zero, and in this case, we're talking about the square root of x here, the sine of x, and here, e to the x. So you have to be able to identify the right function, the right point nearby to this point, the right function, the right point nearby to this one, the right function, the right point nearby to this one, in order to make an effective linearization. We want to calculate a value that's difficult to find using only your mind. What does the calculator do? Yeah, you can go to Google and you can type in square root of two or sine of 0 0.1 and you'll get an answer. But what is the calculator doing to find these numbers? Well, something very similar to what we're doing. Basically, it's a number that we know the answer to and then we make the tangent line about this value and we use that tangent line, L of X, evaluated at the number of interest to estimate the true value with an estimate nearby. We want to estimate 2.1 squared using a suitable linearization. So in this case, we'll want to choose the function F of X equals X squared and find a tangent line at a point near 2.1 where we can evaluate all the components of the tangent line nicely. So since the form of our tangent line is y minus y0 equals m x minus x0, the point slope form, and the form of every tangent line is f of x0 equals f prime of x0 x minus x0. So in this case we use the derivative to evaluate the slope of the curve. This is the tangent line. Now the idea of linearization is that the tangent line is equal to another function, L of x, called the linearization, and that's f of x0 plus f prime of x0 times x minus x0. Now, if we are expanding about a point x0 near the point we're trying to estimate for this function, then L of this value, x, should be approximately the value that we're looking for. So this is the idea of linearization. In this case, we want to choose a point x0 where we can evaluate all of these terms neatly in our heads. So in this case, the choice of x0 is logically going to be 2 because we can calculate f prime of x0 equals 2 x0, so in this case, f prime of 2 is 4, and similarly, f of x0 is equal to 4 as well. So we're going to be able to take this value and plug it in here, and we're going to be able to take this value and plug it in right there, and everything will be easy to calculate in our heads. So the linearization L of x is equal to 4 plus 4 times x minus 2. Now we can simplify this if we want to a nicer form. 
but there's not really a need to. Right away, we can use our linearization to estimate 2.1 squared, which will be 4 plus 4 times 2.1. Oh no! Okay, let's put parentheses like this to recover the situation. 2.1 minus 2 is 0 0.1, so this will be 4 plus 4 times 0 0.1, so this will be equal to 4.1. Now, notice that 2.1 squared is equal to 4.41, and this is approximately 4.4, which is equal to L of 2.1. Let's look at a sketch of this situation. Y equals X squared looks like this. and at 2 we can calculate 2 squared is 4. Now we can also calculate 2.1 squared in our minds but in this particular problem we chose this value to be the nicest value near 2.1 that we could calculate in our minds. Then we wanted to calculate 2.1 squared. So this is not to scale, it's just enlarged to kind of show you the idea. So the value here that we want is 4.41. But what we did to estimate this value is we linearized the function by drawing the tangent line to y equals x squared about the point x naught equals to 2. So this tangent line is equal to the linearization of y equals x squared about the point x naught equals 2. There is a tangent line and effective linearization at every single point along the curve. But we want to cleverly choose an appropriate linearization that is near the value we're trying to estimate. And then, in order to estimate this value, we take our L of x, our tangent line, and we evaluate it at 2.1. And so we're saying this is our estimate of the true value that we want. And in this case, it was 4.4. So not a terrible approximation. Let's do another example. In this case, let's estimate the square root of 26 using a linearization. Now, in this case, the number is not easy to calculate. But what we want to do is think of it in our minds this way. It's a tangent line problem. And so we want to recast the problem as find the tangent line to f of x equals at the point x naught equals. And then our task is to figure out which is the correct function and which is the correct point for this function that we can evaluate that's near this one. So the square root is clearly the function that we need, and 25 is probably the best choice of a square root that we can calculate neatly. 36 is not a bad option, but 25 is much closer to 26. Now it's worth mentioning that we can also estimate the value. This might be useful later for a sanity check to see if our estimate makes sense. If five squared is 25 and 6 squared is 36 then we can use this idea to feed our intuition that the square root of 26 should be greater than 5 and less than 6 and since 26 is closer to 25 and 36 it should be probably just larger than 5 maybe 5.1 something like that now let's do what we always do to find the tangent line we'll use the point slope form of a line, and then we'll use 
calculus and the function itself to calculate our tangent line. So here we've used the derivative of the square root function. So you can say, recall that f prime of x is going to be basically the derivative of x to the one half. And so we use here the power rule, which is one half x to the minus one half. And then this is equal to one over two root x. And so that gives us this value right here. Now we've chosen x naught equals 25. And notice that the choice of x naught equals 25 makes it so that we can evaluate this quantity to be five and this quantity to be one tenth. So we can do this in our head without needing a calculator. So now the linearization of x, which is equal to y tangent line, and in this case, to estimate the square root of 26, we use x naught equals 25, will be the square root of 25 plus one over two times the square root of 25 times x minus 25. So all I did here is I, I solved for this y tangent line by bringing this to the right hand side and I plugged in x naught equals 25 for each place it appeared in the equation. So now if we want to use the linearization to estimate the value, we evaluate L of 26, which is equal to five plus one tenth times 26 minus 25. This is one, so this is overall 0 0.1, and so we get the value 5.1. Using a calculator, we can check that the square root of 26 is approximately 5.0990195 and so on. And this uh, is approximately equal to 5.1, which was our linearization evaluated at 26. To understand why this works, let's sketch what's happening here. The square root of x is like this, and it's important to draw the square root function not like this, but recall that there is a singularity as x approaches zero, the slope approaches positive infinity, and so there's actually a vertical tangent. So it's very important with the square root function to start off steep and then gradually let it go like this. We do this so that we can respect the fact that there is a vertical tangent at x equals zero. And so what happens is the tangent line, as it comes in to the origin, actually develops infinite slope. Now, we are able to calculate the square root of 25 to be five. In our heads, no problem. And what we want is to estimate the square root of 26 which is this number right here. This number is 5.0990195 and so forth. It's a transcendental number, so it has infinitely many non-repeating digits. Now, to do this, we calculated the linearization, which was the tangent line about the point 255. So in this case, it looks something like this. Now, this is the value here, L of 26, that we used to estimate the exact value of the square root of 26. Now in this video we talked about uh, square root and square numbers, and it's worth mentioning a little bit of the history of mathematics on these two points. The first is that square roots are irrational numbers, and so even though we can find the square root of four is two and the square root of nine is three and so forth, these are special cases. A number like the square root of two cannot be written as the ratio of two integers. So if we say in mathematics, the square root of two does not equal p over q for any p or q in z. And this we call the integers. The integers are basically your counting numbers and their negatives and zero. So we would say, this is the set of numbers 
dot dot dot, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot dot dot. These are your integers. And it's like a Z, except there's a double bar in the center like that. Now, Pythagoras ran a school of mathematics in Greece in the 5th century BC. And he used to think, philosophically, that mathematics was sort of like truth, and number was the essence of everything. He had a student, Hypasis, that discovered the square root of 2, an irrational number, a great discovery that is credited to this person. Pythagoras was scared of the result. He didn't understand it. Pythagoras thought that numbers had to be whole. And the square root of 2, because it didn't have this property of being the ratio of two integers, confused him. It didn't align with his worldview. And so he actually drowned his student. He responded with violence because he did not understand something about the world. This is sadly a feature of our world today, that many people, when something doesn't align with their worldview, rather than try and correct their worldview or figure out maybe what, why, figure out the truth behind an idea, they respond with violence. And this is a problem. It's a, a fatal flaw of our species, which is sort of a pun. Now, square numbers are different. Here is a 2.1 squared, which we got, tried to calculate. And the idea of a square number is that it's basically a length on the number line that has been geometrically turned into a square. So on our real line, so this is these are called the real numbers, and they form a number line, no gaps. And a length can be demarcated by taking two values on the number line, like one and three, and then the length is two between them. Then taking this length and turning it geometrically into a square, we compute the square number. So two on a side is two squared, it's actually an area of a geometric object, just like turning it into a cube is a cubic number, and that geometrically is like a volumetric quantity. And similarly, we can scale the dimension, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, and so on, up to arbitrary power, and then this also has a geometric analogy which we think of as higher dimensions. not area or volume, but hyperspace.